Hello, and welcome to another edition of Paranormal Activity and Mysteria Stories. Let me give you a preview of what I got coming up in this video. Yeah, the first is this video of this strange object here seen flying behind the POTUS's helicopters. Let's see, I also have this video of these people who shine lasers at these UFOs, and then the UFOs react by flashing their lights like this. I have another video of this strange light moving across the night sky. Uh, this is an article from the New York Post. You know, New York City UFO sightings in 2020 are up 283% from 2018. Uh, this is a video of this strange object that suddenly appeared on this asteroid that uh, they've been watching. also have this article from Reddit, and uh, this was released by Christopher Mellon, and it's an interview of um, some pilot who saw a UFO, and it was, the interview was given by someone with military background. Also have this video here of this artist who um, draws human faces, and he compares, you know, the ratio uh, between human faces and the videos of Bigfoot faces. But uh, very interesting is uh, this guy here, somehow his, his profile matches very close to this um, supposed photo of a Bigfoot. So this guy yeah, does a lot of comparison. Very interesting video. And then also have this video here. This is a top 15 most convincing Bigfoot sightings caught on tape. And yeah, this also is a very interesting interview. You know, I hope you guys have a time. Yeah, this is an hour and a half interview. I watched it the other day. This guy, Mark McCandlish, he got into trouble because um, of some conceptual drawings that he made, which uh, spooked some people in the defense industry because apparently they were too close to some of the alien reproduction vehicles that, um, that we had. So, uh, yeah, if you have time, this is a very interesting, yeah, because he talks about the flux liner, which is supposedly our, uh, our anti-gravity craft. It's a yeah, craft that's made by, by the U S military. Uh, also have this article here on these researchers who found these mysterious stone structures in the uh, Sahara desert. And apparently these things have been sitting out there for over 2000 years and, they were just recently discovered. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, let's go to this first video here. Let's check this out. Look at that. I uh, hope you, you caught that. Do you see that? Yeah, this is uh, this is the POTUSes. Yeah, I don't think that's a bird or a drone. That thing moves way too fast. But of course, I can't play this whole thing. They've been hitting me with copyright violations if I play these too long. So I can only play a little small portion and then I will leave a link so you can check out the whole thing yourself. Let me go to the next video. Yeah, now this are, the, you know, these, these guys in uh, Peru are pointing lasers at these lights and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Now this happened during a live Peru TV show. And if we look at the date here, this happened on August 24th of 2020. Now, I'm sure no one in the United States heard about this. And I, I would say this is pretty spectacular, you know, and uh, again, uh, people have to understand that stories like this, uh, they go out on the wire and, you know, different um, uh, news stations can choose whether or not they want to run these stories. And for whatever reason, you know, they're choosing not to run these stories, you know, even though there are strange events like this happening all over the planet. 
Let me look at, uh, yeah, let's take a look at this video here. Let me go full screen on this one. Yeah, that is definitely something. And I mean, I, I think that you can tell by the quality of this video and the spontaneity of it that this isn't anything fake. This isn't like some kind of staged event or um, something created by some animators or digital artists. You know, like, yeah, to me, this feels totally authentic. And I'm going to say it again, you know, these sightings are not anomalies. These sightings happen all the time. Let me go to this, uh, my next article here. New York City UFO sightings in 2020 are up 283% from 2018. You know, I don't necessarily believe that we're getting more sightings. I think that just people are, aren't afraid to report it anymore because, I mean, I'm sure people can tell that, you know, people aren't being ridiculed the way they used to. And, you know, now, now we know, you know, with all the different um, evidence that's come out that, that, that the CIA installed people in these news stations and, you know, purposely made to ridicule people who were seeing actual events. You know, that was, it was a, a standard practice. But that's recently changed. So let me hear. This has been one far out year. UFO sightings across the city are up 31% from last year, 46 compared with 35, and an eye-popping 283% from 2018's measly dozen, according to the National UFO Reporting Center. Brooklyn is tops in tin foil hatters. See, why do they say that? Brooklyn is tops in tin foil hatters? If you report seeing something that is actually there, you are going to be called a tin foil hatter. This is all part of the brainwashing and discouraging people from reporting things that they actually see. Again, you know, this is the New York Post. You know, yeah, I've lost um, all confidence in any of these mainstream publications because yeah, nowadays they're all about manipulation. So yeah, you, we, we people we can't we have to stop believing the things that these people do because their mainstream media's purpose is not to tell us the news i think we've learned that by now mainstream media's purpose is to make sure we don't know the truth let me go on to this next video here uh this is a yeah, astronomers just noticed that something massive suddenly appeared on this asteroid now i want to play this part here and listen to their explanation Some can't understand how such a large object has suddenly appeared on the end of the asteroid. Well, there's some who have said that the object is causing somewhat of an illusion, and that the spherical object isn't actually a dome or an object protruding out of the asteroid, but is actually a crater, and was likely created by a piece of debris hitting it. Okay, did you hear that? That object that you're looking at right there is actually a crater. So don't believe your eyes Believe what I'm telling you because I have letters behind my name and I've written a book. So that ball that you see there is not actually a ball. It's a crater. Trust me. I went to school. Um, yeah, that's, that's the quackademic, right? Those are people who, again, who have belief systems that when they're presented with facts that fall outside of their belief system, they engage in mental gymnastics to try and tell you that what you're seeing is not really there because they can't believe it. But anyways, uh, there'll be a link to this uh, video in the description. You can check it out. Uh, this article here is very, very interesting. 
Days ago, Christopher Mellon shared a bunch of declassified documents. In one of them, a pilot with military background was able to interview a UFO in an encounter with multiple witnesses and radar evidence. Now, when I um, you know, looked at the, uh, the source of all this, most of it was all in Spanish. So um, thank, thank God for the person who um, translated all of this. But uh, Juan Ignacio Lorenzo Torres was an officer in the Spanish Air Force, a fighter pilot in the Sahara, and later commander of the Iberia and director of an aviation school with more than 28,000 flight hours. But anyways, in this, you know, he goes on to describe, um, let's see. 310, and then they lowered us to 280, that is to 28,000 feet. At this level, there was a bit of turbulence, and I asked the second to stay alert. As soon as we saw the plane, we would ask Barcelona Control to authorize us to board, thus avoiding those inconveniences. After a while, Juan warned me, there he is. It was a very strong light, too much to be an airplane. It was coming from the front. I told the second pilot not to report the presence of traffic yet because this did not look like a normal plane. And he was not wrong. The strange light got very close. Suddenly, in the center, another light appeared, like a ball that varied in hue. It went from white to blue to grayish. The most curious thing is that it pulsed as if it were breathing, as if it had a life of its own. At that moment, we also saw two other side lights, somewhat smaller and of the same dull color. Did they form a single body? Supposedly, yes, but then there was a discrepancy with the radar. You'll see. Sorry, Ignacio, how far away could those lights be from the nose of your plane? Very close, about 10 meters. How? Yes, about 10 meters, and it kept the same speed as the caravel. So here's a pilot watching this ball of light 30 feet, about 30 feet outside of his window, at going at the same speed. And another thing to, you have to, you know, remember, um, sightings like this, these aren't anomalies. I'm sure anyone who watches Ancient Aliens or any one of those numerous, you know, UFO shows that are on the cable networks, right? And just, yeah, disclosure isn't happening, right, though? Um, yeah, you will know that pilots all over the planet encounter UFOs all the time. And we know that they have been encountering, encountering them at least as far back as World War II. You know, um, you know people can uh, read about the Foo Fighters. You know, some people may think that the Foo Fighters is just a band, but nope, the Foo Fighters got their name from, you know, the UFOs that used to follow the pilots in World War II. Anyone who, want, you know, anyone who wants to do any more research on that, please Google Foo Fighters UFO. But uh, yeah, we're not alone on this planet, folks. These, these crafts are not traveling from other dimensions, other galaxies, from the future, you know, just to run into our airplanes and then, what, travel that far back distance again? Right? No. I'm sure some of these crafts have the ability to go to other planets, go to other galaxies go to other dimensions, maybe even time travel, but they're always coming back here. So I'm going to conclude the reason they're always coming back here is because they live here too. We're not the only people on this planet. And also here, we're not also, we're not the only species. We're not the only sentient species. I think this guy here is going to prove that there, you know, the Bigfoot is real. Yeah, this guy here, he's an artist. He draws people's faces. That's what he does. That's what he's good at. And he explains that in this video how, you know, he's because he does this, he's trained to um, studies people's faces. And he's also come up with this human face ratio. He says all faces, all human faces fall within this ratio. He goes on to describe, you know, this guy here falls within that ratio. But these... um. Bigfoot photos, images, they don't fall within that human ratio. At least this species doesn't. 
let's see he falls yeah this is another non-human face ratio yeah this is from the um this is from the patterson gimlin film i think i think this is the patterson gimlin footage and yeah you can see how this bigfoot doesn't fall into that human face ratio here's a chimp look where yeah look how their face ratio is but when you compare this guy here right and this photo of a bigfoot look at that look how similar they are i mean yeah he does acknowledge that you know the nose is slightly different and um he gets into doing the uh, our closer inspection of the eyes and uh, let's see let me see if i can find where yeah where he compares this guy's eyes which is the green and then you know the red is this bigfoot eye so he's yeah he's concluding that these are not the same people but they are very similar which he finds very very odd but anyways this is a um very interesting video please check it out uh, yeah and here this is another you know um video that uh 15 of the best bigfoot sightings and when you watch these videos if you see the bigfoot turn notice the way that they're turning their entire chest when when they have to look behind you know because like most primates they don't have necks humans we can rotate our necks to look behind us primates aren't able to do that when when a chimp or a gorilla wants to look behind them they have to swivel their entire chest their entire torso around whereas humans you know we can we can turn our necks around uh that's something to um look for in these videos like i said there's 15 of the most convincing sightings so very interesting video i don't want to play you know i don't think i have to play this video for people to know what a bigfoot sighting video looks like so uh, i'll leave a link and you can check it out you yourself uh this video i watched the whole thing very interesting this is this guy is uh mark McClandlish, and um, he was a a conceptual artist. Yeah, yeah, he's a conceptual artist. You know, he used to work for all of the top contractors and like popular mechanics and things like that. But um, he had a friend that um, saw one of these ARVs, which is an alien reproduction vehicle. He asked his friend to describe what he saw, and based on the description that the friend gave him, he was able to uh, come up with this drawing. And according to him, most of um, the material that was used to build this craft was off the shelf material. Things that uh, you could, you know, you could purchase at a hardware store, like supposedly these um, cameras are, are similar to cameras that you would find in, in a casino. And like these oxygen sensors here, because this is an alien reproduction vehicle this is something that was made by a u.s company based on alien technology and you know they call it the flux liner but um yeah he uh you know he was uh because of of what he did he be, he, he he became blackballed and uh yeah shut out of any work but uh, yeah, very interesting um, documentary. Please uh, check it out. I will leave a link in the description. This last article is about these researchers who found these uh, mysterious stone structures in the Sahara. The structures vary in size and are thousands of years old. Hundreds of stone structures believed to be thousands of years old have been identified in Western Sahara, a territory little explored by archaeologists. There are structures of all shapes and sizes, say experts. Some were shaped like crescents, some were built as circles, and some structures are massive rectangles outlining many platforms. For instance, one structure has a mix of straight lines, stone circles, a platform, and rock piles that altogether form a complex about 2,066 feet long, reports live scientists. Here, I want to point out one thing here. Hundreds of stone structures believed to be thousands of years old have been identified in Western Sahara, a territory 
little explored by archaeologists. Yeah, I want to concentrate on that, that phrase, little explored by archaeologists. To some of the people who question whether or not this planet can be occupied by several other highly advanced species, I want to um, yeah, just take a look at this little phrase here little explored by archaeologists okay now you and i we or I'm, not, I'm sure there may be some archaeologists out there but okay i'm not an archaeologist and none of my neighbors are archaeologists so no one i know goes out looking for strange things right but the people right the very few handful of people who do search the planet they haven't searched much of the planet because here, little explored by archaeologists. Um, yeah, and I also want to show you this image here to show you the size. Yeah, I don't think most people realize how big like the continent of Africa truly is. Right? Look at all, yeah, all of these, all the other continents can basically fit inside of Africa, right? And in m many of these areas are completely unexplored, right? Like there are, there are places in India where there are uncontacted tribes. You know, there are, there are places in Brazil that were uncontacted tribes. I'm sure there are, there are, you know, regions in China that are unexplored. So if we look at Africa, imagine all of the areas that are unexplored, which do have hunter-gatherer tribes that have no idea we exist. You know, I, yeah, I don't think that's questionable. So now at the same time, right, while we are sending probes to land on asteroid millions of miles away from our planet, right, we know that there are still hunter-gatherer tribes living in you know teeny tiny pockets of of undiscovered of unexplored areas of this planet right so yeah at the same time we have highly we a species us high, would we consider ourselves to be advanced because we're landing probes on mars we're landing probes on asteroids you know we have uh, the voyager which is at the edge of our solar system right um, there are still people who are essentially living like Neolithic man, you know, right next door. So we could also be in the same situation that those uncontacted tribes are in. In the same way, they have no idea that we exist, even though we are, we are sending probes onto other planets most people are not aware that there are advanced species that live in the, in the parts of the oceans that we don't explore. It, you know, remember, you know, all of these continents, right? If we were to put them, you know, lay them next to each other, right? Out, outside of the planet, it would only take up 30% of the planet, right? Yeah, here's a graph, 30%, 70%, right? This is 30% of land. Of the 70% of the planet that is water, we have explored less than 5%. So there's all of this possibility out here. This is, is unknown to most people. Okay, so how would it not be possible for several highly advanced species that pilot the crafts that we see, right? If they were to occupy this part of the ocean that we don't explore and, you know, and parts of the, the planet that, you know, have maybe entrances to huge earth caverns. Anyways, um, I think I'm done pontificating here. Uh, that is going to be it for this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'll have more things like this. Take care.